Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome for another exciting MVA. This is uh, we've done a few together this year. We've got a great day of Unity 5 goodness for you for developing Unity 5 games for Windows 10 Jumpstart. Oh yeah. I'm Adam Chulipper. I'm here with my good friend. I'm Matt Newman. And uh, we, we're going to talk about a bunch of cool stuff. So first, let's get rolling on a couple of slides so we can kind of understand the audience, what we're going to talk about today, and uh, then we shall get rolling on some really, really cool game development stuff with Unity 5, one of my favorite software programs on the entire planet. Let's do it. All right. All righty. So I'm a technical evangelist with Microsoft. I do a lot on the gaming, of course, and cloud and web technologies. Uh, had, a, had a good career in some uh, secure software development areas for a while, and uh, then gaming kind of... Uh, accidentally took <laughs> took my life in a different direction. I uh, was a software architect for many years before joining Microsoft. You can find me uh, at AdamT at Microsoft.com and on Twitter at Adam Tulper. I always try to tweet out pretty cool things about stuff I'm interested in, especially game development stuff. So, uh, And if you have any questions on anything that you see today, whether you are live or watching this on the net at some point in time in the future, feel free to reach out to me at AdamT at Microsoft.com for any clarification or help. And uh, Matt? Yeah. Let's talk about you, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I'm Matt Newman. Currently, I'm serving as creative director of Silicon Storm. It's a uh, kind of augmented reality firm based in Orange County. Uh, I have my own, um, I've done actually a multitude of uh, indie game studios. I am an indie game designer. Uh, my main studio is Subscience Studios. That's where I do a lot of the games I've done. Uh, last year, we did a game for the band uh, Avenged Sevenfold called Hail the King. Uh, you can find that on pretty much all mobile markets. Uh, I created a, My first game I ever created was Grave Stomper, so I kind of have an affinity for that kind of dark, whimsical type stuff, uh, which is on iOS and Android. Um, and that was with a company that I first started, Mad Menace Entertainment, a couple of years ago. Um, so, bounced around a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now uh, uh, been doing uh, video game stuff for years, started as a Flash designer, now jumped into Unity for the last five years, been through all the different iterations of it. So. Yep. Here to basically show you some cool stuff. I've worked with uh, a multitude of, of different clients and different people, so uh, and Matt, exciting. Matt and I uh, both run the Southern California, the Orange County uh, Unity Meetup. So if you happen yep. to be in Southern California, check us out. We uh, do some cool stuff down there. Absolutely. All right, today we're going to start out with a Unity overview and our workflow for using Unity, which may or may not match others' workflow. Everybody has their own different way of using it. Um, this kind of builds on another course that we did. There's going to be a little bit of overlap and a whole bunch of new stuff as well. I'll show you a URL for the other course shortly. Uh, we're going to talk about integrating Unity 5 features, and we're going to have our good buddy Mark here from Unity, who's oh, yeah. going to be joining us, talk about Unity 5 features. In Module 3, we're going to go over some coding and a little bit of AI, which um, is a funny term because really it's not really intelligence in games. <laughs> then uh, number Module 4, everything I wish they told me about cameras. Um, if you're starting on Unity and, uh, or even been using Unity for a little bit, hopefully you'll pick up a couple tricks on what you can do with cameras. There's uh, still plenty more than outside what we're going to show, but hopefully we give you some cool tips on there. And number 5, UI, Unity's UI system, so overlaying like... Uh, um, HUD elements, I should say, and the wow factor. So yep. doing some cool stuff to make that game stand out just a little bit more. And finally, Module 6, we're going to be talking about building for Windows 10, which is not fully released yet. So uh, <laughs> is this kind of the, the chicken before the egg? You know, Windows 10 has been out for a while for um, public download, so we're going to uh, we'll talk about how you build for that, what to expect there. Uh, Unity's done some pretty cool work on the tooling there, which is currently in beta, so uh, we'll get to that as well. Awesome. All right, today the target audience, this is going to be beginner and intermediate Unity developers. Um, if you're a beginner, there's going to be tons of new stuff. If you're intermediate, I think module two is going to be especially interesting to you. And uh, ideally, uh, you're a C Sharp programmer. Now you can do a whole lot in Unity without code. And we're going to look at actually a lot of stuff today that is not code based. Uh, we're going to do code as well. Um, the main code module will be in module three, but there's going to be some code outside of there as well. But we're going to see a lot of stuff in Unity's interface. And for some suggested uh, supporting material, C Sharp Fundamentals, digitaltutors.com has some great Unity learning content on there. And we also, uh, about September or October, we did a nine hour course. Uh, Matt and Carl from Unity and a bunch of my other good buddies here at Microsoft. And uh, that you can find on ak.ms slash free Unity training. That one's uh, our, uh, our, first, our first collaboration. Our first collaboration. Zombie, we did Zombie Pumpkin, zombie pumpkin Slayer. Slayer. We got more zombies today. <laughs> more zombies today, yep, yep. So join the MBA community. So uh, <laughs> over 3 million registered users. I had a, an outdated slide here shortly. And they're like, no, no, we're over 3 million now. So that's, that's amazing. 
Get 50 MVA points for this event, aka.ms forward slash MVA voucher. Use the code win 10 only 5 and just caution that uh, expires on August 3rd. All right, let's talk real quick about Microsoft's investment for game devs because we've done a couple um, interesting things. We're going to talk about the Visual Studio tools for Unity in this module today. We acquired Syntax Tree uh, about a year ago or so, and then we released them for free. We have BizSpark. We give pretty much all of our software to startups for free. Uh, you can check that out on bizspark.com. All the code today, we're going to be using Visual Studio. Uh, you can use Mono Develop, which is installed by Unity by default. Uh, but we're going to do everything in Visual Studio because it makes the experience a lot better. And there's also the Visual Studio graphic debugging tool. It's a really cool, low-level tool that you can use to uh, go frame by frame and break apart all of your shader calls, draw calls inside of there, and help to find uh, some really specific. It's a low-level tool. If you're a beginner, you're probably not going to be using it. But at the very end of the day today, we're going to look at Unity's profiler, which is now included in their free version as well. So very exciting. Cool. We've got some really cool tools there. All right, module one. This is our overview, Unity overview, prototyping, and workflow. Matt's going to show you a little bit on the prototyping side. I'm going to show you some of the Unity uh, asset side, yep. our, uh, our workflow, how we work together back and forth. Um, a real little bit on Git. Yeah, this is the perfect little bit, little yeah, bit of artist stuff. programmer. Uh, Scenario. Interaction. Yeah, exactly. Relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Long walks on a beach. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Unity overview. Unity, I was a software architect for many years, and somebody asked me, they said, hey, do you want to talk about Unity to our uh, game dev group and uh, for Windows 8? Now, there's a product for Microsoft called Unity, which is not in any way, shape, or form related to the game platform development system engine that we're going to be talking about today. One is used for dependency injection a uh, software architecture practice, and one is used for creating games. So uh, when I heard this, I'm like, huh. So you want to talk about Unity and Windows 8 to your group, and then I realized that Unity was a game engine. So I started uh, checking out, investigating Unity, and then that changed everything I did from that point forward. So caution, this is very addictive. Um, this may change, alter your life's course. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the first day I started using Unity, it I never looked back. That was it. Using that was it. Yeah. It's it's addictive. I did I did some uh, while extremely powerful DirectX. I did uh, in my college project. My final project was with DirectX, and then I didn't touch it for again for a long time. <laughs> and then I found Unity, and uh, so that's what brings us here today. So uh, Unity gives you full 2D and 3D support. Um, it is not a 3D asset modeling tool. Matt's going to show a little bit. In my well, there, there are some plugins that let you do that. So I, for the most part, you want to use external tools. I always like to put an, an asterisk surrounding that because yeah. with built into Unity, you can do uh, some terrain building, which yeah. we've done before in some prior uh, MVAs. And as of Unity 5, they introduced SpeedTree. Now, SpeedTree is used actually in movies and other top-end games, so it's a very professional tree system. Um, and then again with the asterisk, because there are third-party plugins like um, ProBuilder, for example, that you can do modeling inside of Unity. But which is excellent, which is by the way. cool stuff. <laughs> physics uh, uses um, Box 2D for the 2D physics and NVIDIA physics. Uh, Unity 5 got an update to NVIDIA Physics 3, so a lot, lot, lot more performance there. There's some really neat demos you can find on the net where Unity 4 had, you know. 20, 30 physics objects running the scene. <laughs> They've got like 200 on yeah. Unity 5. It's pretty crazy. Over 22 platforms supported, so it's pretty much the uh, one of the most amazing cross-platform tools I've ever seen. Over 22 platforms. Uh, Real-time global illumination and physically-based shaders. And if you're wondering what the heck is that, we're going to be talking about that in Module 2 today. Uh, Mechanism animation system, we're also going to be looking at that in Module 2. Uh, the asset store, let me switch over to that, because that is what kind of hooked me here, because I... Um, I'm not a good designer. That's why I work with this, this gentleman sitting to my right-hand side here. Um, <laughs> but on the Unity Asset Store, you can find things like uh, full-up 3D models, shader writing systems that will do it for you, uh, zombies. You know, I'm, I'm realizing I can get a lot of these, these assets here. Oh, man. Matt, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to start putting stuff on the Asset Store. <laughs> <laughs> so very, very cool stuff. I mean, it, this is what makes it amazing. Uh, at Microsoft, we work, of course, with a lot of game studios, and you'll find that near every single one uses something from the asset store. They might not. It's, it's it's a great resource for not only programmers finding resources to develop your own games, but also if you're a designer and you want to prototype a game, you have a game idea, and you're trying to get something to market, or even find people to join your team. It's a great place to go as a starting point. Find a sample project, reskin it, do what you need to do, and then you'll have a base that you can work from to create pretty Absolutely. much any type of game you're looking to do. So it's. Asset Store is, is huge. Amazing. I, I highly recommend, you know, definitely kind of just 
going through it and seeing what's on there. And there's a ton of free Lots stuff. Lots of free stuff. Yeah, Unity yep. puts out a ton of free stuff. And then there's some, some great paid stuff, too. If you're, if you're willing to spend a little bit, you can get some really great, low-cost, uh, full projects that you can just go nuts with. So Things, really, environment systems, mountains, yeah. et cetera, that, that would cost you probably 10 grand plus if you had somebody totally. write it for you that you can get for, you know, 70 bucks, 50 bucks, 30 bucks. And like you said before, it's a great resource for external plugins. So there's a lot of uh, really, really great tools. Like you mentioned ProBuilder, one of the plugins that I use, it's it's absolutely amazing for basically prototyping out levels on the fly. And just like using these different tools, you can actually create within Unity without having to go to Maya or Blender or some outsource, some outside program. You can actually do it all within Unity, which is really, really cool. It just saves a lot of time. So definitely check out the asset store. Huge benefit to Unity. So. Cool. Yeah. Amazing. So let's take a moment and go over a Unity overview. So this kind of builds on the MBA we did previously, but I'm sure there's a lot of folks joining us today who don't have any Unity experience. So I just want to give you a quick run through of kind of Unity's interface and some core concepts before we kind of start prototyping things out and diving in further. So let's go and look at Unity. Um, I'll talk briefly about what we're going to be doing later. We're going to be building out various aspects, looking at um, some things in this particular project. Matt, what is the name of what we're looking at here? So this is uh, Vamp Kid versus the Zombie Apocalypse. Vamp the 3D version. We've actually done this game in two separate versions. I think we're, we're gonna be going mostly over the 3D version today. We'll show you, I think, some little bits of the 2D one we did, right? Or maybe? <laughs> uh, we're, we are gonna be showing some okay. of the 2D version, which will eventually be open sourced on GitHub. Uh, cool. This particular one here as well uh, is gonna be up on GitHub. I will show you that URL in the second module today. And we, uh, we kind of had the idea of doing little bite-sized pieces and we thought, you know what, let's, let's bring you something a little bit more full, maybe not a complete game that you're gonna turn around and sell and make all the money that we would normally make off this. <laughs> um, Huge checks. But so we, we kind of <laughs> changed this up a couple days ago and we said, hey, let's, let's see if we can't put something a little bit cooler together here. Yeah. So we've been working uh, actually in the last few nights yeah. pretty, pretty late on this. Um, so hopefully uh, you'll get some enjoyment out of this today. We've got some pretty cool tips in here. And uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, let's yeah, look at... It's kind of a classic platformer uh, with some shooting elements. It was, it was just kind of a fun project that we threw together and hopefully you guys will dig it. So yep. it's, it's zombie themed with a little bit of a vampire spin on it. And then uh, it's fun. I sense cool. you have this art dark side to you. There is, it's this dark <laughs> side that's always, but it's always coming out in like these cute whimsical creatures. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know what's going on. All right, so um, in Unity, let me show you real quick a new project. And uh, again, for the folks that are brand new to Unity here, uh, Unity 5 brings a little bit different interface too. Unity is a 3D engine, but also supports 2D, which really is still a 3D environment. Just uh, it sets up a couple defaults that make it easier to work in 2D. You can always switch back and forth. So let me do 3D here and simple Unity project. You get some asset packages to start and you can check all these off or not. I highly recommend not. These are essentially, if you've used Visual Studio before, think of NuGet packages that you would bring into your solution. These are all prepackaged bundles. Uh, think of stuff you would get from the Unity Asset Store. Unity gives you a bunch that are there by default and some things that you install or add themselves here. So for example, Modern Weapons Pack. Uh, you can see all stuff that I've downloaded already from the Asset Store shows up in here. So I can just quickly check them off. You don't have to check off anything here. You can always do that later on. So I'm gonna actually just not check off anything here and create this project. Very cool. And once this loads up, Unity will always reload its interface. It closes out so it didn't crash on you. Uh, it closes out, reopens again, initialize the environment. And it is a pretty basic looking system, but as you'll see today, we can do some incredibly powerful things in it. Uh, let's talk about the interface very fast. Right here is your scene view. This is your design surface. So the levels that you're gonna create, you do it inside of here. And let's kind of result. Let's go back to our default view here. So layout default at any point in time, if you mess up your windows, I like to show this people because some people don't know this is there, even though it's right in your front of your face. But sometimes that's the most, uh, I think, hidden area is uh, when it stares you right in the face. Yeah. If you mess up your interface, which you are bound to do at some point in time, I'm always popping my windows out in Visual Studio and, and in Unity on accident. Uh, layout default, we're, we're kind of back to normal here. So this is our scene view. We click on play. It's compiled our game behind the scenes and we're running our game. And we can't interact with it, we don't have anything in our game. We're gonna, we're gonna build out a couple things. As I mentioned, Matt is going to prototype out the level a little bit. Yep. So we've got some things to look at there. Make sure you get out of play mode here. Uh, in any Unity demo, I always talk about this. So if you've seen my other demos, you're like, why is he talking about this again? This is extremely important. Edit, preferences, 
colors, play mode 10. I like to change my interface a little bit different color when I play my game, because then I know I'm playing my game. And you think, well, isn't that obvious? Not always. It's a huge help. I mean, there's so many times that when I'm using Unity, if, if I don't have those colors enabled, where I can kind of see that I'm in a 